Welcome everyone. In this script, we've got three goals. One, we're gonna remind ourselves of how to load in a data set in R, which we still need some practice on. Two, we're gonna make a table from that data set. And three, we're gonna use that table to calculate some conditional probabilities. And the data set we're gonna be working with is a sample of 15,000 users from a Spotify style music streaming service, looking at which combination of artists they streamed. Now, to work with this script here, you're gonna need a library called the Tidyverse. It's a brilliant collection of uh, other libraries in R. You can read more about it here, uh, but if you wanna work with this script, you're gonna to need to do two things. One, make sure it's installed. I've got it installed, but I'll remind you of how to uh, walk through that process over here. So let's assume you don't have the, the Tidyverse library installed. Come over here to the Packages tab, click on Install, type in the name of the package, Tidyverse, and click Install. I've already got it, so I'm gonna wait for you and assume that you're gonna get that installed and you're gonna pick up the video right here once you've done. All right, so once you've got the library installed, then you actually have to load it. So you install once and then it sits on your hard drive. You load it every subsequent time that you need to run the commands in that library. So for me, let's run library tidyverse. Uh, and now we've loaded the, all the commands contained in that package. You may or may not get a variety of, of things spat out to your console down here. The only thing to worry about is if you get something that is an error. If you get an error, make sure you've got the package installed. And if you're still getting an error, that's the time to reach out for help. All right, so let's, uh, let's import our data set right here. Now I've got a command here on line 11 of this script that will actually read in this file directly off of my hard drive without the import data set button. And if you're familiar with computer programming and the idea of path names and relative path names, feel free to use a command like this, read.csv. I like it because it makes your scripts a little more reproducible for somebody else, but there's absolutely no problem with skipping line 11 here and using the import data set button instead. Let's do that, in fact. So come over here to import data set under the environment tab. Click on it, and you always want the first option from text base. So let's surf to wherever you've stored the plays top 50 file that you downloaded from the course website. Here it is on my hard drive, plays top 50.csv. It's the top 50 artists on this music streaming service. Let's open it up. Now, remember our three part checklist anytime we're using the import data set button. Item number one, what do we want to call this file? The default is to name it after the file itself, plays top 50. No problem there, check. Item number two, does the file have a header row and R, is R correctly interpreting that? Yes, it does have a header row, which you see here over in the, uh, the raw input file. There's a row of variable names, which user are we talking about, and then the names of the various artists. But R is actually not correctly getting that. It thinks there's no header row. Let's correct it and say yes. There's a header row. And then finally, what is separating the individual data fields? It's commas, and sure enough, R thinks it's commas. All right, check, 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 we're good, import. We see our usual spreadsheet style look at the data set. We're not gonna work with it in that form, so you can either keep it open or close it, I'll close it. All right, so now having done that, we can actually skip line 11. You don't need to run both line 11 and the import data set button. What is this data set? So let's take a look at the column names here using the call names function. Well, there's 51 columns. There's one column for user, a unique numerical identifier for which of the 15,000 users we're talking about. And then there are variables for a whole bunch of different artists, many of which might be familiar to you. Radiohead and Kanye West and you know Oasis, and et cetera, et cetera. Lots of uh, late 90s and early 2000s hits in here. All right, how big is this data set? Well, there's 51 columns and 15,000 rows. That's 15,000 individual users, one column for the user ID, 50 columns for the individual artists. The entries in this data set are all zeros and ones. Those are binary or indicator or dummy variables, where a one indicates that that user on that row played a given artist in that column, and a zero indicates otherwise. You can look at the, say, first six rows of the data set using the head command, and you'll see all these zeros and ones. So for example, user three played the prodigy, did not play Nightwish. All right, so we've Got the data set loaded in, let's start making some tables. First thing we're gonna do here is focused on two particular artists, Franz Ferdinand and the Killers, because why not? We'll cross tabulate the data according to those two variables here. The way we do that is using the xtabs function in R. So xtabs stands for cross tabulate. This command is saying cross tabulate by, well, which variables? Franz Ferdinand and the Killers. Where do I find those variables? In the plays top 50 data set that we imported and it's sitting up here. So let's 
put our cursor on that line, hit command return or control enter on a PC, and we get a table, often called a contingency table. A contingency table is just a fancy term in data science for a table of counts. And this is telling you, for example, that of the 15,000 users uh, that we sampled here, 319 of them played both Franz Ferdinand and the Killers, one here, one here. Uh, 1,154 played the Killers, one, but not Franz Ferdinand, zero on that row. 12,956 played neither of them, uh, and so on. All right, so from a table like this, uh, we can actually estimate some probabilities or you know, some empirical frequencies, let's call them. So what's the estimate for the probability that a randomly sampled user of this streaming service plays Franz Ferdinand? Well, let's just kind of do a brute force calculation, uh, treating R as a calculator here from this table. So we know there are 15,000 users in this database. Of them, it looks like how many played Franz Ferdinand? Well, there's 571 here and 319 here, depending on whether they did or did not play the killers as well. That doesn't matter for this calculation, so let's just add them up. 571 and 319 divided by 15,000. That calculation is 0.059, about a 5.9% chance that a randomly sampled user has played Franz Ferdinand. What about a conditional probability? Let's ask, for example, what's the conditional probability that somebody plays Franz Ferdinand given that they played the killers? So now we're focusing on this column over here because we're conditioning on this variable, killers equals one. So let's ask, of those uh, folks that played the killers, and there are 1154 plus 319 of them, how many of them also played Franz Ferdinand? Clearly the answer is 319. So our numerator is 319. Our denominator is that sum right there, 319 plus 1154. And the number we get is 0.2165, about a 21, 22% chance that somebody has played Franz Ferdinand given that they've also played the killers. And what I'll emphasize here is clearly these two events, plays Franz Ferdinand and plays the killers, are not independent because the overall probability of Franz Ferdinand is like 6%. The conditional probability given that someone plays the killers is more like 21 22%, and that violates our definition of independence. So I've got two examples for you to try in here, and you, you could try any uh, artist, right? You could, you could try, for example, from this table right here, Bob Dylan and the Beatles. What's the probability that somebody plays Bob Dylan, and what's the conditional probability that somebody plays Bob Dylan given that they play the Beatles? Or how about this one? This table right here tabulates all the users according to whether they played Kanye West and Rihanna. What's the probability that somebody played Rihanna? Focusing on that column right there. Or what's the probability that somebody played Rihanna given that they played Kanye West? I'll, I'll leave that as a set of uh, simple little practice problems and they follow very much the kind of calculations uh, that we did up here, just brute force arithmetic. However, it's also straightforward to take these counts uh, the, you know, these numbers like 806 or 11,809 and actually tell R to turn them into proportions or frequencies for you. All right, so, and the way we're gonna do this is using a combination of two elements here. So we'll take our, our raw table that we got right here back from Franz Ferdinand the Killers, you remember that one, and then we're gonna take the output of this table and we are going to pipe it to the prop.table function. So there's two things going on here. First of all, the prop.table function takes a table of counts and it turns it into a table of proportions. So that's the behavior of this function right here. And then there's this pipe right here. So the way you write a pipe in R is with the percent sign, the right caret, and another percent sign. And you can think of this pipe as indicating a flow of data from left to right or top to bottom in this case. So that pipe says to take the output of this line right here, which is a table of counts, and pipe the result into what comes next, which is prop.table. And prop.table is on the next line right here after the pipe. It receives the input from X tabs up here, and it turns the result into a table of proportions. Okay, so this is a very common uh, situation that we encounter where we have to chain multiple types of functions together to produce the result that we want. First, we have to count and then we have to normalize those counts, turning the counts into proportions. And the pipes here are kind of reflect the logical order of that operations. Count first, and then turn those counts into proportions. Now the default behavior of prop.table is to turn it into a set of overall joint proportions or joint probabilities. That is make the whole table sum to one, as in 2.1% of people played both, 86.4% of people played neither, uh, and so forth. 
We could also, however, if we wanted, condition on either the row variable or the column variable by specifying an optional argument to the prop.table uh, function. So let's take that same sequence of commands right there, take x tabs, pipe it to prop.table, and let's add this optional flag to the prop.table function. It says margin equals one. That corresponds to the rows. And what that's telling R to do is to condition on the row variable in calculating your probabilities. So let's execute that whole block of code on lines 53 and 54, highlight it, hit command return. And now the whole table doesn't sum to one. Instead, each row sums to one. Okay, and so the way to read these are the conditional probability of, say, playing the killers given that you played Franz Ferdinand, 35.8%, the conditional probability uh, of playing the killers given that you did not play Franz Ferdinand, about 8% right there, okay? Uh, we could also condition on the column variable, and that would be involve changing margin equals 1 uh, to margin equals 2. So let's try that. So now we're going to tabulate by, again, Franz Ferdinand and the killers, so the same first line right here, We'll still pipe it to prop.table, but change that flag, margin equals 1 to margin equals 2. This means condition on the column variable, or equivalently, make the columns sum to 1. Right? And so now we see, all right, the conditional probability of playing the killers, uh, given that you uh, did listen to Franz Ferdinand, 21.6%, same thing that we calculated before, uh, and a conditional probability of not playing Franz, Franz Ferdinand, given that you played the killers, 78.3%. Okay. All right. So that covers a really important set of operations in R. Uh, reading in the data set, making a table of counts, a contingency table if you'd like, and then taking that table of counts, using it to calculate conditional probabilities, either by hand, just using ordinary arithmetic from the table of counts that we saw up here, or using this piping operator to take the table of counts, pipe it into the function prop.table that turns it into a table of proportions, either an overall table of proportions where it all sums to one or by conditioning on one of the two variables. In this case, condition on the row variable, Franz Ferdinand equals zero or Franz Ferdinand equals one, or in this case, condition on the column variable, killers equals zero or killers equals one. And that covers the very, very basics of contingency tables in R, as well as something that we're going to see over and over again, which is this piping operator. So I would encourage you to come back to these examples right here. Try it both ways, just using ordinary arithmetic to fix your intuition, and then try calculating those probabilities using piping and prop.table, and that'll be a great set of practice problems uh, to set you up for success on the next video.